I've got a pre-built desktop to look at today, and it's the first one that I've reviewed which features a shiny new Zen 5 CPU from AMD. This is the Helio Ultra from PC Specialist. It contains, among other things, a Ryzen 7 9700X processor. I've looked at a fair few pre-built systems from PC Specialist now, so let's have a look at what their latest system is all about. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. So as I said in the intro just then, the Helio Ultra from PC Specialist is the first pre-built I've reviewed that contains some of AMD's new silicon. Leo covered the launch in detail and made some excellent videos on these new processors. If you didn't watch those and you want to know more about them, then I highly recommend checking them out after you've finished watching this review. While a lot of the tech world are eagerly awaiting the potential release of the X3D variants of Zen 5, we all know what being a tech enthusiast is like. Sometimes we don't want to wait. So if you're looking for a first system, either for yourself or for someone new to PC gaming, then you more than likely want to get stuck in straight away. And if that sounds like you and you're looking for a pre-built, then this will likely be of interest to you. The Helio Ultra will set you back £1,899, and just like all of the other PC specialist systems that I've reviewed on the channel in the past, it comes backed by their three-year standard warranty, which can be upgraded to their silver, gold or platinum tiers if you want even more peace of mind. That £1,900 bags you the following specs. A Ryzen 7 9700X processor. Straight from AMD's latest desktop CPU release lineup, the 9700X features eight cores running at a base clock speed of 3.8 gigahertz and boosting up to 5.5 gigahertz while using a base TDP of 65 watts. As I mentioned at the start, if you want a much more in-depth look at that processor, then go and check out Leo's review where he went through everything specifically on the CPU in a lot of detail. That CPU is sitting in an Asus Prime X670-P Wi-Fi motherboard. This is a full ATX AM5 socket DDR5 mainboard with some pretty decent specs and running on the higher end X670 chipset. Internally, it supports up to three M.2 drives with one of the slots having support for PCIe Gen 5. There's some pretty substantial VRM cooling on offer thanks to the pretty beefy heat sinks. They're both finished in silver and adorned with some Asus Prime branding. Rear I.O. on the board is quite generous with a total of 10 USB ports. You've got one Type-C 3.2 Gen 2, three Type-A 3.2 Gen 2, four Type-A 3.2 Gen 1, and two Type-A 2.0. Alongside the USB ports, there's a HDMI and display port, a PS2 port, 2.5 gigabit ethernet network port, three audio jacks, and a pair of connectors for the Wi-Fi antenna. Handling the graphics and all of the gaming eye candy is a Gigabyte RTX 4070 Super Aero OC GPU. Obviously the white card to fit in with the rest of the white theme that the Helio Ultra has got going on. This card features 12 gig of GDDR6X memory running across a 192 bit memory bus and the clock speed will boost up to 2565 megahertz. Then it of course supports all of the bells and whistles that come with the latest generation of Nvidia graphics cards. Stuff like DLSS3, frame generation and it's got third gen RT cores which means you can turn on ray tracing to make your game lighting look all fancy without the computer thinking it's an Etch-a-Sketch. Moving on to talk about memory, and if any of you have seen my previous reviews, you'll remember all the times I've moaned about slow memory in pre-built. Well, it seems that PC specialists have listened to me. The Helio Ultra contains 32 gig of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 memory running at 6,400 mega transfers with cast latency of 32. In the words of Borat, very nice. For storage, the Helio Ultra comes with a Samsung 990 Evo 2TB M.2 SSD. I like the capacity, 2TB, it's enough to store the new Call of Duty in at least one more game. And as for the speed, it's a bit of a weird one. It's compatible with both PCIe Gen 4x4 and PCIe Gen 5x2. 
and it's sitting in the Gen 5 M.2 slot on the motherboard with the BIOS configured to auto when the PC arrived with me, which results in this drive running at PCIe Gen 5x2 mode and speeds. But due to it only utilizing two lanes when running in that Gen 5 mode, it's actually slower than when using four PCIe lanes and setting it to Gen 4. So it's better to run it that way. And while it technically is a Gen 5 drive, something which I've moaned about in previous reviews, I'd love to have praised it, but it's not a full fat Gen 5 drive. So Samsung, you're tricking no one. This is, it's better running it at Gen 4. That being said though, the difference in speed is marginal with the out of the box settings and it's not something that you're realistically going to notice day to day. Keeping the lights turned on is a Corsair RMX 850 watt power supply. This is a fully modular 80 plus gold rated component with native EPS 12 volt connectors. Obviously not all of the cables are installed right now, but PC specialists do chuck everything else, all the spares and accessories and stuff that isn't used in the box when you pick up a system from them. Keeping the 9700X cool is a PC specialist Frostflow 240 ARGB all-in-one liquid cooler. The radiator has been mounted in the top of the case with the two 120mm fans set to exhaust. I've looked at a few PC specialist branded coolers in the past. They seem to be OEM ID cooling products based on the names and the looks. They've always done a decent job at keeping things running cool and I'll show you exactly how cool in this PC specifically when we look at the thermals and the noise later on. Housing all of the components I just mentioned is a PC specialist Lumin ARGB mid tower case or as some of you eagle eyed viewers may know it, it's a rebranded Gamdias Niso P1, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But either way, I really, really like this case. It's pretty big for a mid tower. It'll support a 360mm rad in the top, bottom or side, as well as that side being big enough to house a 420mm if you want to go down that route in the future. If you were to change stuff around somewhere down the line, it'll accommodate up to 10 120mm or 6 140mm fans. The side and front glass panels are both hinged and incredibly easy to open, and there's tons of ventilation on the top and the right hand side panel. The glass isn't totally panoramic like we've seen in some cases in recent times, but instead it has a curved supporting beam on the corner, which I personally think looks really great. You can also lie the case down and use it in a sort of horizontal setup, which is a nice touch and it looks a bit different to the usual glass box with RGB lights inside. There's a touch of PC specialist branding on the front alongside the I.O. That I.O. consists of a pair of USB 3.0 type A ports, a single USB type C 3.2 Gen 2 port and then an audio jack. Overall, this is a solid case and I quite like it. I'm a bit of a fan of it. To help keep things breezy inside that case, PC specialists have installed an additional four 120mm fans, three on the side set to intake and one on the back as exhaust. And they're all white to match up with the design of the rest of the build. And speaking of the design, before we dive into the performance and the benchmarking then, let's take a minute to talk about the aesthetics and just the overall looks of the Helio Ultra. As you've no doubt already noticed, it goes heavy on the white theme, with almost every component sticking to that white script. I love the geometric patterns on the venting of the case. The only thing that disappoints me really are the black cables. Some white extensions would do wonders for how this system looks. The GPU has one, but the 24 pin doesn't. It just looks a bit odd. Either go full white or commit to a black and white build. This kind of doesn't feel like it's really fully committed to either. That's not to say I dislike it at all though. I'm a fan of how it looks. I just think it needs a few finishing touches. Cable management is decent throughout. This is pretty much what I've come to expect from PC specialists now, to be honest. They've got people building these systems who care about doing a good job and that shows in their work. So one final note before we look at performance then. Unlike usual, I did have to update the system a little bit more before testing this time around. Windows has been updated to the 24H2 release or update, whatever you want to call it. And I installed the latest chipset drivers from AMD. Both of those things were not done when the system arrived with me. Aside from that, I've updated the graphics card drivers and that's about it. All testing was done with everything else left as is from delivery, including that SSD being set to PCIe 5x2 sort of mode. 
Let's dive in to look at performance then, kicking my testing off with Cinebench Multicore. The Helio Ultra recorded a result of 19,594 points, putting it about on par with the 7700X in regards to score, but doing so while using much less power, 77 watts as opposed to the 135 watts used by the 7700X or the last generation equivalent of the processor. Clock speeds while running this test hovered around the 4.3 GHz mark after dropping from their short boost up to around the 5.5 GHz maximum. While clock speeds in a single core Cinebench run maintained that 5.5 GHz max boost speed using just 50 watts of CPU package power. And that resulted in a pretty impressive Cinebench single core score of 2,228 points, putting it right in the mix with the results of the 14th gen i7 and i9 CPUs used in our comparison data. 3D Mark Time Spy sees the Helio Ultra finish in second place when ordering the chart by GPU score. The Gigabyte Aero OC 4070 Super surpasses all of the other 4070 Supers that I've tested in previous reviews. Looking at the CPU score, paints a similar picture as the Cinebench test with the 9700X coming in at around the same level as the previous generation 7700X with a score of 13,901 points. The memory in the Helio Ultra is undoubtedly fast. Ada64 clocked it at 58,998 megabytes read speed and 82,753 megabytes per second write speed. Boiling that down, it'll handle gaming with ease. And my final synthetic benchmark before we move on to look at gaming is PC Mark 10. The Helio Ultra scored 9,892 points overall, 11,771 points in essentials, 13,074 points in productivity, and 17,095 points in content creation. That content creation score is boosted massively by this being a gaming machine with a dedicated GPU. To summarise that, it's a powerful PC that can handle everyday tasks and general use without even breaking a sweat. Let's talk gaming then and move into my new look gaming section. I noticed and agreed with your comments regarding the amount of gaming charts in previous system reviews and it was a little bit boring so I've ditched them altogether. Let's start off and talk Call of Duty. Performance at 4K with maximum settings and no ray tracing is impressive running at around the 80 to 100 FPS mark throughout the game's built-in benchmark. This would make for great graphical fidelity while playing through the game's campaign, for example. You can add about 50 FPS to that figure when dropping the resolution to 1440p, which I'm guessing most people will do when playing multiplayer. Either way, this is a good start for the Helio Ultra. Moving into Red Dead Redemption 2 then, again at maximum settings, this time running using Vulkan over DirectX, and performance was again impressive. It wasn't quite as high as Call of Duty, with the 4K FPS hovering around the 70s. This is still a truly amazing looking game, considering it's been out on PC for coming up to five years now. Dropping the resolution down to 1440p does net some FPS gains as we'd expect, running at around the 120 mark, sometimes dipping down to between 100 to 110. Next up is Forza Horizon 5, a game that I'm sure would look good even if you ran it at 480p, it's a gorgeous looking title. At 4K, FPS hovered in the 90 to 100 range, which is very nice. Again, this is with all maximum graphics settings. Dropping the resolution down to 1440p, saw the FPS jump up to roughly 130 to 140, again very nice. If I were playing this game on the Helio Ultra though, I'd definitely stick it on 4K and get stuck in. So time for something a bit more demanding then, Cyberpunk 2077. At 4K the Helio does struggle a bit and the 4070 Super begins to show its limitations. FPS was roughly 30 to 40. 1440p performance though was much better, with the game running just slightly north of the 80 FPS mark the majority of the time with occasional dips down into the 70s. Assassin's Creed Mirage at 4K hovered in the 70 to 80 FPS range. Pretty impressive, especially considering the amount of NPCs that the game renders in during its built-in benchmark. Turning the resolution down to 1440p sees the performance increase quite nicely. The Helio managed 110 to 120 FPS pretty solidly during this test. And finally, we have F124 then. This title is very well optimised, running at 100 plus FPS the entire time and climbing up into the 130 range at times when testing at 4K. 1440p performance was better, as expected, but 
more than expected, almost double. I didn't expect that. Again, the figures climbed after starting at a measly 180-ish FPS. Performance peaked at around 240 FPS. For maximum settings, that's very, very impressive. Let's talk thermals, noise, and power then before we finally wrap up the video and I'll give you my thoughts. CPU package power consumption for the 9700X found in the Helio Ultra was measured at 88 watts during a Cinebench multi-core sustained benchmark. That figure dropped to 77 watts while gaming in Cyberpunk 2077 and hovered around the 29 watt mark when the system was idle. Those power usage figures coupled with the cooling in the Helio Ultra resulted in an idle CPU temperature of 45 degrees and then not much between the gaming and Cinebench multi-core temps with those coming in at 64 and 65 degrees respectively. The Gigabyte RTX 4070 Aero OC manages to keep itself pretty cool during a gaming workload. These temperatures were measured after roughly 30 minutes of a gaming stress test in Cyberpunk 2077. The GPU sensor read 63 degrees, the hotspot was 73 degrees, and the memory came in at roughly 61 degrees. All that increased heat does lead to a very slight difference in noise profiles when the fans kick in and do their thing. At idle, the PC measured 35 decibels from around 15 centimeters away from the case. When running through Cinebench and stressing the CPU, the noise levels increased to 37 decibels. And finally, when gaming and throwing the GPU fans into the mix, the Helio Ultra topped out at 40 decibels. Here's a quick clip of what those three scenarios sound like. And finally then, before I wrap the video up, the total system power when measured at the wall socket was roughly 90 watts when idle, 163 watts when running a Cinebench multi-core benchmark, and 373 watts when gaming. So there we have it. That was the full rundown of the Helio Ultra from PC Specialist, a pretty decent offering in most departments. The pricing, to remind you, is £1,899, which when I compared that to a a price that similar sort of build on PC Part Picker, it's very close. I had to change a few parts out in the list to accommodate for the rebranded PC Specialist cooler and case, but it's very close in spec. And there's only a rough £50 difference, and that's without factoring in a Windows license and the warranty that you get with it. I love the case and the versatility that it brings to the table with the ability to lay it horizontally, lay it flat on your desk. The build overall is nice and tidy. All cable management has been done to a high standard. A few more finishing touches would take it up a level or two, though some white cable extensions and maybe some better fans. But that stuff you could change pretty easily if it really bothered you that much. And the color cables are not going to affect the performance in any way at all, so it's no big deal. The processor is definitely going to split opinion and a lot of people will watch this and be thinking about the X3D chips that are no doubt coming out in the future. But rumours are that they're going to be announced or released at CES, which is still a fair few months away. So for anyone that wants to pick up a PC now, who doesn't have the time or particularly want to build their own, then this looks to be a decent option. Gaming performance was solid, especially at 1440p. That's the sweet spot for this combo of GPU and CPU, I feel, but 4K gaming at 60 FPS is definitely achievable too, maybe with a few setting tweaks in certain titles. Overall, it's more of the same from PC Specialist, a good value system which performs well and looks pretty sweet too. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. And if you go down below the video, you'll find links to our merch store. And then in the video's description, there'll be links to our Discord server, our Patreon page, and our website if you want to check any of those out. Anyway, guys, I've been Matt. This on the desk behind me has been the Helio Ultra from PC Specialist. I'll speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.